Sunday morning. We welcome you to the celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. It's a little bit different this morning. Our youth of the parish have done a passion reading that is pre-recorded, and the service will end with that reading in a hymn, and then simply be done. There will, no, there will be no dismissal or uh, recessional hymn, so to speak. And so I give a big thanks to the youth for working so hard on that passion reading today. The service begins with the Liturgy of the Palms and then proceeds. There will be no regular gospel reading because the passion will be at the end. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace be to heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and in, in immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.
suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens in my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversities? Let them confront me. Is the Lord God who helps me? Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Please say the psalm in unison. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years are with sorrow. My stomach fills me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, and dismay to those who are my 
Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here we are on Palm Sunday again with palm raising crowds who are celebrating the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. Who exactly is this crowd gathered to sing Jesus' praises as he passes by them on a donkey? Well, they're ordinary people. There are people who have lived under the oppression of Romans for a really long time. They're being taxed heavily. They're not allowed to rule themselves. They live in threat of having their religious freedoms taken from them. And their religion is their identity. 
It's who they are. It's what makes them the people of Israel. And they want an end to this oppression. They're tired of being kicked around. They're hungry to be in charge of themselves again. And they believe that Jesus is the one who has come to make this so. They believe that he has come to shake them free from the hands of the Romans. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But Jesus isn't the warrior king they are expecting. Though they don't seem to notice, he symbolically tries to tell them this by entering Jerusalem not on a horse, as a warrior king would, but on a donkey, a humble farm animal. He is a king bent not on seeking war, but on seeking peace. Jesus does bring triumph, but not the kind the palm wavers are expecting. They don't understand the triumph Jesus brings. Jesus has come not to conquer Rome, but to conquer the world. He comes to Jerusalem not to give death or sidestep death, but to meet death head on. He will conquer the world and death itself by dying. He will bring freedom, but not an external freedom from an oppressive occupying force, but freedom from the bonds of sin. He is about power, but not the kind of power people are used to. He is about the power of love. And here we are on Palm Sunday waving our palms and proclaiming the kingship of Jesus. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. It's a wonderful and triumphant day. But because we know the whole story, because we know what is to come on Good Friday, it is also a day covered in shadow. And it almost feels inappropriate to be shouting with joy. Isn't it just a little bit hypocritical to be celebrating Jesus today when we know he will die on Good Friday? How could the crowds have done this 2,000 years ago? How could they have bowed down to Jesus one day and less than a week later cheer for his death? How could they be so fickle? We're a little uncomfortable standing in their shoes. We don't want to be associated with this fickleness, this disloyalty. We want to think of ourselves as people who would be true to our word and loyal to the end. We want to proclaim that we are not worldly like that crowd welcoming Jesus that day. We understand who Jesus really is. Raising our palms in the air today and then standing with the crowd and shouting for Jesus' death on Good Friday reminds us a little bit too much of our own fickleness, our own disloyalty, our own identification with the powers of the world. It reminds us that we are a lot more like these crowds than we care to admit. We too proclaim Jesus one day and walk by on the other side of the road as he lies in a gutter on the next. I know that I can be lost in the wonder and praise of the gracious mercy of God one day and then turn around and make the most callous judgment of someone the next, just writing them off, rejecting them entirely without showing any sign that the grace I have been shown has begun to rub off on me. I know that some days I can sing, brother, sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you, and then walk out and treat you as though I was born to rule, and you're lucky to have me in your company. And I don't think I'm alone. You see, it's easy to cheer for Jesus, to wave palm branches, to identify Jesus with our wants and desires, to claim Jesus for our side, and it is just as easy to forget Jesus in the next instance and call for his death 
when he turns out to be different than we expected. When he calls us to look beyond our own wants, to the needs of our neighbor, to the needs of the world. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. When you are behind closed doors and away from the public eye, how do these words affect you? When you get to work and love and justice don't turn a profit or put you in line for prom promotion, how do you respond? Do you honor Jesus with your actions or capitulate and crucify him? What do all the words of commitment mean when it comes to working out how to commit your time and your money? How could the crowds be so disloyal and so fickle? How could they cheer for Jesus one day and cry out for his death the next? Well, perhaps they were just like us. Perhaps it was just as, just as difficult for them as it is for us to move beyond our own self-centered view to the wider view that Jesus gives us. But I'm not trying to leave you here today in guilt and despair. I do have one more message to give you. For thank God, thank God, this is not the end of the story. On Thursday night, on Monday, Thursday, we will pick up the story again. We'll hear of Jesus kneeling at the feet of people, just like us, and washing their feet. We'll hear of him breaking bread and sharing wine with people just as fickle as we are. And on Friday, we will look in horror at the extent of what people just like us are capable of doing, and will hear him say for us, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And on Sunday, we'll see him raised from the dead, overcoming sin and death. And who knows, we might just find ourselves being raised with him. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all 
the ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again be ready and joyful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, you show your sons and daughters the way of freedom through the gentle obedience of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions as we seek to follow him. We pray in his name, Christ the Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Mark It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when, Passover, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. 
and all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd of swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I'll destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I'll have built another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say again to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders said again to Peter, 
Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests led a consultation with the elders and scribes and whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see it and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, 
Lama Shabaktani. Which means... My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who would come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid.
The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ 